Good afternoon, everyone. This is TransConnect 2024. We are in October, and today we'll be talking about tandem therapeutic plasma exchange with CRRT or continuous renal replacement therapy, which is uh, like a hybrid technology in both the techniques are used uh, without having to, you know, uh, resort to only one. And this has mainly helped in patients who are already on CRRT, and then we have to do plasma exchange without stopping the CRRT therapy. So today we'll be talking about the basics of both the uh, uh, extracorporeal uh, LPs. We will be talking about some of the literature as to how this was developed, advantages and rationale behind the tandem procedure, because we'll be doing it together, the protocol followed, the take-home message and the references of the whole uh, presentation I'll be sharing with you. So basically, tandem therapeutic apheresis procedure is where apheresis is performed simultaneously with another extracorporeal circuit. So that is, uh, we do a plasma exchange, which has got uh, very wide implications like uh, to remove toxins, cytokines, antibody mediators, etc. Along with the CRRT, that is the continuous renal replacement therapy, which has got its own indications. Uh, suppose the patient is in acid, is hyperammonemia. Uh, there is electrolyte imbalance, uh, volume overload, an AKI, which is progressive uh, in nature, and uremia. So basically, all of this, when we use a CRRT therapy, along with that, with, without stopping the CRRT, we can go for a plasma exchange. Yes, this procedure or this uh, tandem procedure started way back in 1982, and uh, lots and lots of paper came up for them. And uh, there are, in fact, some uh, very big studies on them. and. After that, now we can even perform it in house. So, what are the various papers that have been published? Like we said, it was started in 1982 when there was a patient who was uh, like a uh, uh, long lasting anuria was present in this seven month old patient and uh, had a severe uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome. And uh, so, the combined Plasma pheresis and hemodialysis treatment was done for this patient and uh, the patient uh, improved. There is uh, another study which was published in 1999 in which there was an intensive tandem cryofiltration pheresis along with a hemodialysis. Both the circuits were in the series, that is, the outlet of first circuit was linked to the inlet of the second circuit. So basically, after one circuit, the other circuit was followed. So this was in an end-stage renal disease patient with cryoglobulinemia. The other uh, uh, article which was published in 2000 was on concurrent centrifugation plasma pheresis with continuous venovenous hemodiafiltration. So this was done in parallel uh, circuit and uh, parallel essentially means that both the inlets uh, are the same for the both the techniques and similarly both the outlet or the return is also for the uh, both the both the extracorporeal therapies. So basically, in this paper, they combine the centrifugation plasma pheresis along with CRRT through CVVHT, that is central venovenous hemodia filtration. So this uh, was done way back in 2000. Another paper was on therapeutic plasma exchange performed in tandem with hemodialysis patient in uh, M protein disorders, and this was published in 2006. The renal re function recovered when they combined these two therapies, and therefore, uh, this uh, article also emphasizes the role of tandem apheresis. Then, tandem plasma apheresis and hemodialysis combined together in a series circuit was done uh, in 2008. In this paper, they had a, a 82 patients in which 483 tandem treatments were performed during the last 16 years. And this was done in Germany. So this is another paper on tandem plasma pheresis along with hemodialysis. And they had combined the circuit in the series. And it was on 36 patients in which 287 tandem procedures were done. And uh, this reduced the risk that were associated with anticoagulation. And there was patient comfortability, which was also emphasized upon. Now, this is an 18 years experience in Canada in which they combined the hemodialysis and the centrifugation therapeutic plasma exchange. And the circuit was in series and 92 patients were actually treated and with 621 tandem procedures. And they concluded that this tandem apheresis is safe. 
it is efficient and requires less human resources and time. So this is another case in not in kidney or uh, it is in liver failure, uh, basically an infantile liver failure, acute liver failure in which plasma exchange was done along with a CRRT therapy. CRRT in liver acute liver failure is generally done to reduce the uh, ammonia levels which are high in acute liver failures at times with hepatic encephalopathy. Now, this is a paper which was published in very recently, 2021, in which tandem plasma paresis along with CRRT was done in a pediatric patient in a parallel circuit. So, it's, it emphasizes that if it is planned properly and interdisciplinary teams are ready to interact with each other, then we can also do the same in pediatric patients. Now, this is another paper of ALF in which plasma exchange was done along with the CRRT and this was also in a pediatric patient. Now, there is another paper which has been published uh, in an Indian setting and this was uh, from New Delhi Ames in which they did tandem plasma pheresis along with hemodialysis and the circuit was in a series that is outlet of the first circuit was linked to the inlet of the second circuit and basically one after another uh, the plasma was treated. So this was done and it was a very small study but nonetheless it also told that there is economically beneficial to the hospital, to the patient, it's very comfortable and also there is less chances of adverse drug reactions to uh, citrate toxicity and all these things especially when you combine the tandem uh, FRSs. So they had two patients, uh, one was a patient on maintenance hemodialysis and he had uh, uh, the anti-HLA antibodies along with immunosuppression. So basically both the indications were of uh, CRRT and plasma exchange respectively. Then the other patient was RPGN due to ANCA positive vasculitis requiring both dialysis and plasma paresis. Now, so what is the rationale behind plasma exchange uh, and CRRT done together or in a tandem? Basically, it's a hybrid approach which allows for removal of differently sized molecules. So basically, if you see CRRT, it, uh, you can remove small water-soluble molecules like ammonia, whereas large molecular size which are protein bound can only be removed by the plasma exchange. So if you see, when you combine both the tandem procedures, you are actually removing differently sized molecules. So it is efficient in terms of removal of bilirubin and ammonia and when you combine that you can have an uh, artificial liver support along with the, uh, uh, the functions of the kidney. So basically TPE or plasma exchange what it's going to do is it's remove the uh, bilirubin and coagulopathy is corrected by the FFP replacement whereas CRRT it is going to correct the uremia, uh, any uh, uh, acid uh, electrolyte imbalance and also hyperammonemia. So both combined together have a very beneficial effect. So also when you actually do a CRRT and go to plasma exchange in a sequential manner, so what happens is there is a rebound rise in ammonia at times. There is sometimes clogging and damage to the CRRT filter itself. It is of course cumbersome for the patient and time consuming. So all these things uh, were kept in mind and then a tandem procedure was devised in which, in which CRRT is not stopped and you can go or resort to plasma exchange along with it. Of course, you have to redistribute the inlet pressure that we'll discuss in the subsequent slides. So the disadvantages of individual procedure are the advantages of the tandem plasma exchange and CRRT. So basically it's a life saving procedure in which both the combination therapies are, uh, are combined together and obviously each one is going to do its role and differently sized molecules which are offending agents can be removed. It is efficient, it is less time consuming, lesser anticoagulation, less man, man hours and power, patient safety, convenience and comfort is utmost in these random procedures. So this is the device that we use that is the spectra of the and on, in, on the hind side you can see this is the CRRT machines. It is an ICU setting in which we have combined both the procedure for the uh, extracorporeal therapy. So if you see the target population of course you can do pediatric and adults and uh, basically adults who are in ALF or acute on chronic liver failure are waiting for an emergency liver transplant along with multi dysfunction uh, uh, syndrome sometimes they may have. So in those cases you can actually resort to 
these tandem procedures. So plasma exchange indications are wherein you are trying to remove the protein bound molecules and also the cytokines, aromatic amines and all of those inflammatory mediators. Whereas CRRT, you are trying to uh, look, uh, remove the fluid overload, the hyperammonemia because it is uh, water soluble. So all those water soluble substances can be removed through the CRRT machine. Prerequisites, it's, uh, you have to have an interdisciplinary team. You have to have the consent of the patient and the guardian uh, or the next of kin if, if there is a kid. So all of that needs to be kept in mind and excess is similar. You have to have a double human hemodialysis catheter, especially if you're using a parallel circuit in which the uh, inlets are and the outlets are both the common for both the machines. So once you have that, you can build the circuit. So basically it is uh, you add the three-way connector to both the inlet and the outlet line. Inlet line you can see then are connected to both CRRT and plasma exchange in parallel. And then the return line similarly is also connected through a three-way connector into the double lumen catheter. Both are connected together, the CRRT and TP. So uh, all you need is you don't require any sophisticated uh, equipment for this or an instrument for this. Uh, attach a three-way and then you can uh, tandemly, you know, do these procedures together. Machine, of course, plasma exchanges we do with uh, spectro optia and CRRT. There is a Prisma Flex, and depending upon whether it's children or uh, adults, you can have Prisma Flex M60 or M100. The volume, plasma volume, is generally 1.5 with 100% replacement, and FFP is generally what we use, especially with deranged coagulation. Inlet AC ratio is 12 is to 1, and uh, pressure that we keep or the inlet pressure that we keep is 40 to 50 ml per minute. The CRRT parameters that we need to uh, actually change in a parallel circuit is uh, actually self-explanatory. You are you were doing a CRRT before the plasma exchange of the pressure uh, without disturbing the patient or hemodynamically disturbing him. You have to reduce the pressure of one one uh, extracorporeal and actually redistribute it to the other extracorporeal therapy. For example, if you are using a 100 ml per minute before using the plasma exchange. Uh, for CRRT, you can reduce it to say around 60 or 70 and redistribute that 30 ml per min minute into the centrifugation uh, plasma exchange machine that is the uh, Optior for that matter, any machine that you're using. So the blood flow remains the same, only you have to redistribute it. And because centrifugation plasma, plasma exchange uh, uh, therapy works at very, very low rate also almost to the tune when we had done in one pediatric patient we reduced it to 20 ml per minute and uh, because the patient was not tolerating it well and we reduced the blood flow in the crrt to around 60 ml so total combined was 80 ml per minute so calcium homeostasis if you see iv calcium chloride is what we use sometimes in children but uh, calcium gluconate is uh, fairly okay vitals you have to monitor and post procedure laboratory monitoring involved LFT, ammonia, and coagulation profile. That is PTINR, APTT that you need to monitor specifically in these conditions. So take home message, parallel versus series circuit. We always advocate parallel as it provides uniform flow and line pressure with simultaneous even flow supply to patient blood to both the circuits. So that we always advocate a parallel circuit. It is fairly easy to form and it is very safe and efficient. It saves your time and uh, the the people who are performing the procedure are also happier because they get the things done patient doesn't have to sit longer or stop one therapy to conclude the other therapy it is very convenient and comfortable to the patient that way and it is a newer newer domain of epheresis and needs more data in the indian setup there is paucity of literature in the same we are trying to publish an article in this but right now as of now we have an experience on nine patients uh, in which we have done um, a few tandem procedures each so with more literature and with more expertise i think this is a very good method to uh, actually have extracorporeal therapy in place for uh, patients who have wider implications especially when they have an indication for crrt and for plasma exchange i hope this helped this is our references so thank you so much for your patient listening if there is anything i need to answer please write on the chat box thank you